Um, so a little bit about kind of how, how we sort of sell our, our B2B service. I guess this um, hopefully resonates with some of you. This to us is what urban mobility looks like in most consumer cities around the world. Um, unfortunately, when, when local cities and, and transport operators try and fix this, we often get this, um, which is kind of empty buses, low utilisation, and while we aim for pretty high sharing, it, it's not particularly useful. Um, the other thing we know is that when public transportation is actually good, you actually see modal shift. And so people say like, oh, people are obsessed with their car. They're never going to sell their car. It's not real modal shift. If you go to cities like New York, actually like London, like Paris, where there's actually decent public transportation options, you see much higher um, modal shift and, and much lower rates of private car ownership. Um, and I guess I sort of the big picture is, is that unfortunately, in order to build really good public transportation systems, you need billions of dollars. And at this point, it's not something that governments have, have readily available. And so I think we came into this business saying, we actually think that there's room for improved public transportation um, at, at much lower costs. And so I guess our sort of B2B pitch is that this is what we think public transportation should look like. Um, I guess it's a smartphone, um, we have the ability to order, order a shared ride. Um, during your shared ride, you pick up other passengers along the way. Um, but unlike the bus, where everything is fixed, everything about our shared ride service is dynamic. The routes, the pick up and drop off locations, um, who gets picked up first, where they get picked up from, all of that is dynamic and all of it's computed in real time. And I just like, I kind of always pause to say like, this is significantly more complicated than it looks. Like getting from A to B is actually pretty easy. Um, you can use Google Maps, you can like, you know, there, there's maybe a few variations. When you pick up, when you have to consider picking up a passenger and considering from any block, you know, within, sorry, any corner within three to four blocks of the pickup location. You have to think about the drop-off location and three, you know, any corner within three to four blocks. You have to think about whether you're picking up this passenger first, second or third, whether you're dropping them off first, second and third. And if you pick them up, how much you're going to then impact the rides of all the other people in the vehicle. And you want to take into consideration whether or not the van's going to go backwards as part of the detour because that perceptively has a really bad rider experience. And you want to consider in London whether you're going to cross the river more than once because crossing the river in the wrong direction has a really bad rider experience even if it only costs a few minutes. Like this starts to get incredibly complicated and so every time our algorithm requests, like anyone requests a ride, we think about hundreds of thousands um, of different computations in the 10 seconds that we generate a proposal. And then you scale this to a bus where there's 30 seats and this starts to get even more complicated. And so um, this is what we call sort of our, our, our core product. It's converting what we, you know, a very sort of historical fixed route bus into something that looks a lot more like an on-demand dynamic shuttle. Um, instead of only servicing the people that are within walking distance from the single line, you get to cater to the whole city um, by creating virtual bus stops anywhere. It's incredibly more convenient. Convenience drives demand and demand drives efficiency, which helps to reduce the costs of the overall system. And so I guess that comes to kind of via van and via and sort of, of, of who we are and sort of where our B2B business starts. So we started as a consumer service. Um, we currently operate in seven, the six on the slide plus Milton Keynes, a small operation in the UK, um, seven cities and we're doing more than two million rides a month. Um, I think we started really aggressively thinking that this actually is a great public transport option. We went to transit operators, we went to local cities, we went to local governments, like, we should do this, we should do this. You, why do we have buses that stop at bus routes, like bus stops when no one's waiting? Why do we have someone have to go, you know, 20 minutes on a bus to change to a second bus to get to their destination when there's no one else demanding in and around the area? Like, why can't buses be dynamic? And I think, you know, everyone was like, oh, this kind of sounds interesting. You know, there might be some opportunity here, but like, you know, why don't you give it a go? Like, let, let's sort of see what happens. And I think like, it was very difficult to sort of get traction. I think fast forward four or five years and we now have, I guess, more than 57 deployments globally. Um, we've completed more than 50 million rides across the platform and raised more than 450 mil. And so kind of what Via, via slash Via Van in its essence is, is, is shared public transportation that is dynamic and sort of built for the future. Um, in, in fairly dense global 
global cities where we've launched ourselves, um, which is the seven cities I, I, I called out earlier, we're either branded as Via or Via Van. Um, in all these other places, um, we have completely different apps, um, completely different names, um, and we operate sometimes as the consumer, like we operate some of these services in what we call a TAS model, um, where we operate it on behalf of operators. Um, or we offer like a SaaS solution, which we sell our technology white labeled to um, public transit authorities to bus operators and they run the service by themselves. So actually in the UK, we have seven operations. Um, under the Via Van brand, we're live in London and Milton Keynes. Under the Arriva Click brand, um, which is obviously Arriva is a relatively large bus company. Um, we operate in Sittingbourne, Leicester and Liverpool. Um, with the Go Ahead group, we are live with Oxford and then in Oxford and Today, actually, this morning, um, we launched a pretty cool co-pilot with TfL in Sutton, um, where Transport for London is actually trialling their first on-demand or demand-responsive transit, which hopefully goes well, and hopefully we start to see on-demand buses all over London. Um, but I think, like, obviously this kind of says, like, B2B is super easy. I think, like, the road to getting the first deployment was probably the most difficult, and every deployment after that has required a little bit of work. And so I think I want to focus on a couple of deployments and sort of the key lessons learned. Um, but Arriva was actually one of the first... Um, partners we had. Ironically, we were only operating in the US at the time and we found a partner in the UK that was interested in demand responsive transit. Um, like a few things that I think kind of led to this being successful. So I think first was the idea of selling them on something small. You know, I think it's really easy for people to trial something that's, you know, just four or five or six buses. I think selling them on like 100 buses at a huge cost would have been significantly more difficult, even though it may have looked slightly better from like a P&L perspective. I think selling them on a trial that they could get a feel for and then slowly grow over time is something that kind of probably helped to make that a lot, e a lot easier for them to stomach and a lot easier for them to take to their board to get approval for. I think the other is like being willing to trial new features. And so I think Jonathan kind of said this earlier, but you know, Arriva wanted to be able to have wheelchair accessible passengers and so the ability to like, to be able to specify that you didn't want any walking in your algorithm and you wanted to get picked up specifically from your door. They wanted to cater to people without smartphones. They wanted the ability to call an operator to book the ride from their phone and then to receive like phone calls when the car was two minutes away. Um, like things that as a consumer service didn't really make sense at the time, um, but obviously for a, from a public transport operator were like pretty critical to actually getting mass adoption. Um, and so these were features that were specifically tailored to uh, to the Arriva launch. Not surprisingly, every public transit authority we've since launched with has wanted the ability to call for passengers to call and wanted the ability to target wheelchair accessible passengers. And so I think like to Jonathan's point also, like thinking about who your target client is and whether you're gonna have multiple requests of the same thing, I think is pretty important in making that decision work. I think the other thing that was really important from a sitting born perspective is like helping them to figure out the right questions. So we started really, really small and the key thing they wanted to know was like, okay, you're live in New York and you're live in Chicago and Washington DC. They're all really big consumer cities. We're gonna launch in sitting born Kent. It is a much smaller population. Like, could this actually work? And one of the things that was wildly interesting is actually, uh, yeah, I think it's here, that like the Via City is in Orange and the Blue City is Arriva in Sittingbourne, Kent. And one of the reasons for this is that when you live in London, you want two minute ETAs. Um, when you live in Sittingbourne, Kent, the bus comes once an hour, all of a sudden a 15 minute ETA is a huge improvement on what you're currently at. And all of a sudden, if you've got a much larger window, you can tend to aggregate a lot more. Um, and similarly, when you're in a small town, the passenger trips tend to be pretty consistent. In London, we have pockets of demand. You know, if you look at you know, Stoke Newington down to Shoreditch in the morning, like it's pretty likely you're gonna get high aggregation, but we also have, you know, different parts of the day, a pretty large zone, getting aggregation becomes quite a difficult challenge. Um, when you're in Sittingbourne and everyone goes to the train station and to the main shopping strip and back home and like the residential areas in one place and, and the business areas in another, all of a sudden the aggregation push ends up being higher and it's like, I don't know, I still find this sort of fascinating. Um, and the other thing I think that, I think it's kind of blacked out here because it's gone from white to black, but one of the other things that ended up being a really big learning from this case is that Ariva has the ability to actively canvas its, its like canvas the people that 
were using the service and more than 50% of people said they'd switch from private car ownership. And all of a sudden that gave us a statistic that we could take to public, tra you know, to the Mayor of London who is actively trying to get modal shift, to different players that we know are actively in this space getting modal shift, saying like, hey, this isn't our service, this is someone else's service, this is someone else's research, and they're showing that this is the level of modal shift. And so having statistics from an existing partnership um, always helps to sell the second partnership. And so I think this was a pretty important one for us. I think the second thing that's really important from an operations perspective from a B2B model is, is like knowing what you're good at. Um, so another really big um, B2B deployment that was incredibly complicated to pull off um, was in, in Berlin. So Germany has pretty strict ride sharing rules. Um, one of our, the OO competitor of ours, um, doesn't have a license to operate in Germany. Um, and as a result, it's always been notoriously difficult to make it work. Um, we kind of acknowledge what we're good at and what, you know, what we kind of could use help with. Um, and so in, in Berlin, we partnered with the BVG, which is the big public transit authority, um, and, and kind of figured out like, what are we gonna do well and what are they gonna do well? And so, you know, in the BVG deployment, like tech, drivers, operations is something like it's a, is a key resource for us. I think like if we think about why our model works, having a consumer brand where like, okay, we have one person running a lot of these deployments, but that one person has access to the whole London team, the whole New York team, all the pricing experts, all of the cost experts, all of the operator experts, all of the all of the how does free credit work, how to acquire new riders, how to transition riders to higher pricing, like all of those questions which become fairly big ones on a B2B deployment are made considerably easier when you have a B2C operator that has experience. And so I think a lot of that is kind of what we brought to the table. Um, from the BVG's perspective, like they obviously had the regulatory approval, they already had a huge customer base in Berlin, um, they already had sort of a huge kind of operating infrastructure. If you haven't seen any of their ads, the BVG are a public transit authority that does incredible advertising. Um, and so all of that has kind of been built into helping sort of drive success in, in this project. And again, this is something which required quite a lot of app integration. And so I guess wheelchair accessibility was another really big thing from the Berlin deployment. They also wanted to be able to order, like fully integrate the BVG app, sorry, the Belkening app into the BVG app, which required obviously a huge amount of API integration. If it wasn't the largest public transit authority in Germany and one that helped us to win TFL, Singapore, Indonesia, and a bunch of uh, of deployments we've won since. I'm not sure our, our tech team would, would have gone through the pain of this exercise, but again, it's something that was incredible, like it was a high enough profile win and, and sort of going to be a, a big enough learning that was sort of important. Um, the other thing that's sort of crazy about the Germany operations is that it's 80% electric. And so if you have to take into consideration the pick up and drop off locations, who gets in the vehicle first, and then also how much charge is left in the vehicle and how much longer it's going to take adding this passenger to the vehicle to get that vehicle to the closest charging station and whether or not they can do that with the existing charge, like it becomes like a complete, a compli you know, a sort of complicated nightmare, but like working through that was obviously important. You know, fairly soon everything's going to be electric, and learning that and how to integrate that in a shared perspective like was incredibly complicated, but 100% going to pay off at some stage. And and now the every deployment is asking about electric, and we've got pretty big ambitions in the in Europe to be fully electric on all of our physical vehicle operated services like as soon as as possible. And so the last thing I kind of wanted to focus on is sort of the other way that you kind of make B2B successful, and the other and I think that's aligning incentives. So when we set up all of these sort of projects, we fully align incentives. So, you know, obviously there's a setup fee, um, but most of the fee comes from the number of vehicles that are in our B2B platforms and the number of rides that our B2B platforms do. I think like aligning incentives early and making their success your success and them succeeding incredibly important for you um, helps to drive one, like uh, obviously like aligned incentives, but like helps to drive a, a feeling that like you care about what's happening as much as they do, but like, Every one of these successful deployments helps to sell the next deployment, and so it's incredibly important that every one of our partners loves working with us. And we've been fortunate thus far that we've kind of helped to, to sort of tell this story. You know, as rides increase, we increase the utilisation of vehicles. As we increase the utilisation of vehicles, we get more vehicles, ETAs come down. As ETAs come down, we have high utilisation per vehicle, the cost per ride comes down, and all of a sudden we have a pretty successful public transportation operation that really does compete with existing modes. Um, and as the partners 
customers love the service and feel like they get a lot out of it, you find amazing opportunities pop up. And, and I think that's the reason we've been able to scale to as many countries and, and as many places as, as we have. And I think this year is gonna, we're gonna see that map triple. Um, I think we're on track, I think something like more than 200 different deployments that are going to go live or at least get signed this year. So it's an incredibly exciting time for Via Van. Um, if you haven't downloaded the app, just really quick push, like download it in London, give it a go. Um, and also, yeah, yeah, and for those of you that are in the tech world and think and, and not working on your own startups, for those, those of you who are, good luck. But for those of you that you aren't and are interested in tech and interested in jobs, we're recruiting like crazy. Um, so come talk to me. Thank you.